Hello, I'm Willie from the Ozarks, and I'm here in the Rocky Mountains today in Medicine Bow National Park. And I think there's a little bit more name to it than that, Medicine Bow Rowett or something. Anyway, uh, it's July the 8th of 2022. We're, less, we're ready for Lesson 189 in A Course in Miracles workbook for students from the original edition. I feel the love of God within me now. I feel the love of God within me now. There is a light in you the world cannot perceive, and with its eyes you will not see this light, for you are blinded by the world. Yet you have eyes to see it. It is there for you to look upon. It was not placed in you to be kept hidden from your sight. This light is a reflection of the thought we practice now. To feel the love of God within you is to see the world anew, shining in innocence, alive with hope, and blessed with perfect charity and love. Who could feel fear in such a world as this? It welcomes you, rejoices that you came, and sings your praises as it keeps you safe from every form of danger and of pain. It offers you a warm and gentle home in which to stay a while. It blesses you throughout the day and watches through the night as silent guardian of your holy sleep. It sees salvation in you and protects the light in you, in which it sees its own. It offers you its flowers and its snow in thankfulness for your benevolence. This is the world the love of God reveals. It is so different from the world you see through darkened eyes of malice and of fear that one belies the other. Only one can be perceived at all. The other one is wholly meaningless a world in which forgiveness shines on everything and peace offers its gentle light to everyone is inconceivable to those who see a world of hatred rising from attack, poised to avenge, to murder and destroy. Yet is the, why isn't that something? Catch that. A world in which forgiveness shines on everything and peace offers its gentle light to everyone is inconceivable to those who see a world of hatred rising from attack, poised to avenge, to murder and destroy? Yet is the world of hatred equally unseen and inconceivable to those who feel God's love in them? <laughs> Their world reflects the quietness and peace that shines in them, the gentleness and innocence they see surrounding them, the joy with which they look out from the endless wells of joy within. What they have felt in them, they look upon and see its sure reflection everywhere. What would you see? The choice is given you. The choice is given you. What would you see? But learn and do not let your mind forget the law of seeing. You will look upon that which you feel within. Wow, there's the law of seeing. You will look upon what you feel within. If hatred finds a place within your heart, you will perceive a fearful world held cruelly in death's sharp, pointed, bony fingers. If you feel the love of God within you, you look out upon a world of mercy and of love. Today we pass illusions as we seek to reach to what is true in us and feel its all-embracing tenderness, its love which knows us perfect as itself, its sight which is the gift its love bestows on us. Let's look at that again. Today we pass illusions as we seek to reach to what is true in us and feel its all-embracing tenderness. Its love which knows us perfect as itself, its sight which is the gift its love bestows on us. We learn the way today. It is as sure as love itself to which it carries us for its simplicity avoids the snares, the foolish convolutions of the world's apparent reasoning, but serve to hide. Simply do this. Be still and lay aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is. Simply do this. Lay, excuse me, simply do this. Be still and lay aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is. All concepts you have learned about the world, all images you hold about yourself, empty your mind of everything it thinks it 
thinks is either true or false. Empty your mind of everything it thinks is either true or false or good or bad, of every thought it judges worthy and all the ideas of which it is ashamed. Hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought the past has taught, nor one belief you ever learned before from anything. Forget this world, forget this course, <laughs> and come with holy empty hands unto your God. Is it not he who knows the way to you? You need not know the way to him. Your part is simply to allow all obstacles that you have interposed between the Son of God the Father. Your Okay, let's read that again. Your part is simply to allow all obstacles that you have interposed between the Son and God the Father to be quietly removed forever. God will do his part in joyful and immediate response. Ask and receive, but do not make demands nor point the road to God by which he should appear to you. The way to reach him is merely to let him be. The way to reach God is merely to let him be. <laughs> For in that way is your reality acclaimed as well. And so today we do not choose the way in which we go to him. But we do choose to let him come, and with this choice we rest. And in our quiet hearts and open minds, his love will blaze its pathway of itself. What has not been denied is surely there if it be true, and can be surely reached. God knows his son and knows the way to him. He does not need his son to show him how to find his way. Through every open door, his love shines outward from his home within and lightens up the world in innocence. And then there's this prayer at the end of this that says, Father, it reminds me a lot of uh, Matthew 6, 10, where it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Keep that in mind when I read you this prayer. Father, we do not know the way to you, but we have called and you have answered us. We will not interfere. Salvation's ways are not our own, for they belong to you. And it is unto you we look for them. Our hands are open to receive your gifts. We have not thought, or we have no thoughts we think apart from you, and cherish no beliefs of what we are, or who created us. Yours is the way that we would find and follow. We have no thoughts we think apart from you and cherish no beliefs of what we are or who created us. Yours is the way that we would find and follow. And we ask but that your will, which is our own as well, be done in us and in the world, that it becomes a part of heaven now. Amen particularly that last part so reminded me of the Lord's Prayer and the whole thing did to me, but that last part, we ask but that your will, which is our own as well, be done in us and in the world, that it becomes a part of heaven now. Amen. All right, let's uh, go take a look in our text reading. We're ready for chapter 22, Salvation and the Holy Relationship. And we'll read the introduction. While you're turning there, let me tell you about a couple plants uh, out of the Baker's Creek catalog. A, a banana pepper that I've grown a, a lot, real common one, these sweet bananas. Uh, this one here is just called a banana pepper. We're thrilled to offer this classic sweet wax pepper that has been grown by generations of gardeners. Sleek tapered fruit reaches six to seven inches long, two inches wide, and translucent translucent ivory color when immature, ripening quickly to stunning red-orange, superb pickled or stuffed in salads and more, a treasure. And that's, I think I told you, it's out of the Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Catalog, and that's your banana pepper. It's another, I sat down here and I noticed this, um, this yarrow. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about yarrow. Um, there's some yarrow. Can you see that? It, it, it's so common around here, and it's common in the Ozarks, and I've seen it way common in the back east. So I want to start giving you a few herbs that, that we're going to talk about over several days, and we're going to talk about um, 
yar over the next few days. And I want you to really get to know it. And uh, uh, yarrow, it's Achillea millifolium. And um, I'm finding quite a bit of stuff for it out of the uh, Plants for a Future um, catalog. And let me just say edibility, three out of five. Fast growth, hardiness zones four through 10. Um, it reaches about two foot or 0.6 meters. Uh, it will grow in the shade or in, in, the, in the full sun. Dry or moist, well-drained soil, yes. Soil light, medium, or heavy, it does fine in. Mildly acid or mildly alkaline. Medical rating, four out of five. It's pretty high, huh? Um, it, in other words, it has a lot of medical uses. That's one of the things I want to let us all know about it. It's disinfecting quality is the one I want to really talk about a lot. Uh, other uses, uh, it has a lot, four out of five for other uses. Um, it's a dynamic accumulator, a ground cover, a nectary, uh, invertebrate shelter, good for wildlife, and it's a pest confuser because it has its own smell. Anyway, there's some things I found out of the Plants for a Future catalog, and we'll look at some other things in, coming up. But now let's take a look at salvation and the holy relationship. And just a little well, that mountain back there, I climbed it yesterday. I think that's the one I climbed. I'm looking at it from a different location now. Um, these are birch trees behind me. Just a beautiful place. Uh, uh, these these little flowers are all over the place. I don't even know what they are. Some kind of a sunflower looking flower, but uh, they're just all over the place. Anyway, beautiful country. Salvation and the holy relationship. Introduction. Take pity on yourself, so long enslaved. Rejoice whom God hath joined, have come together, and need no longer look on sin apart. No two can look on sin together, for they could never see it in the same place and time. Sin is a strictly individual perception, seen in the other, yet believed by each to be within himself. And each one seems to make a different error, and one the other cannot understand. Brothers, it is the same. The errors are the same. Made by the same, and forgiven for its maker in the same way. Uh, paragraph 2. The holiness of your relationship forgives you both. The holiness of your relationship forgives you both, undoing the effects of what you both believed and saw. And with their going is the need for sin gone with them. Who has need for sin? Only the lonely and alone who see their brothers different from themselves. It is this difference seen but not real that makes the need for sin not real but seen, seen justified. And all this would be real if sin were so. For an unholy relationship is based on differences, where each one thinks the other has what he has not. They come together, each to complete himself and rob the other. They stay until they think there's nothing left to steal, and then they move on. And so they wander through a world of strangers unlike themselves, living with their bodies, perhaps under a common roof that shelters neither, in the same room, yet a world apart. Paragraph 3, a holy relationship starts from a different premise. A holy relationship starts from a different premise. Each one has looked within and seen no lack. Accepting each one has looked within and seen no lack. Wow. Reminiscent of our uh, questions we asked. Do I desire a world I rule instead of one which rules me? Do I desire a world where I am powerful instead of helpless? Do I desire a world in which I have no enemies and cannot sin? And do I want to see what I denied because it is the truth? Remember those questions? Well, a holy relationship starts from a different premise. Each one has looked within and seen no lack. We see our strength. Accepting his completion, he would extend it by joining with another whole as himself. He sees no difference between these selves, for differences are only of the body. Therefore, he looks on nothing he would take. He denies not his own reality because it is the truth. Just under heaven does he stand, but close enough not to return to earth. For this relationship has heaven's holiness. How far from home can a relationship so like to heaven be? Think what a holy relationship can teach. Here is belief in differences undone. 
Here is the faith in differences shifted to sameness, and here is sight of differences transformed to vision. And reason now can lead you to the logical conclusion of your union. <laughs> we're, all, we're all in this together, and, and this, will, this will teach us how to see it. Uh, the holy relationship, where we come from that place where we feel complete, and we want to extend our completion by joining with our brothers and sisters. It must extend as you extended when you joined. And reason now can lead you to the logical conclusion of your union. It must extend as you extended when you joined. It must, teach, it must reach out beyond itself as you reached out beyond the body to let yourself be joined. And now the sameness which you saw extends and finally removes all sense of differences so that the sameness that lies beneath them all becomes apparent. Here is the golden circle where you recognize the Son of God, for what is born into a holy relationship can never end. Wow, isn't that beautiful? Wow, that's I, I love that where he talks about how that uh, our, our relationship, the holy relationship, uh, the holy relationship starts from a different premise. Each one has looked within and seen no lack. Accepting his completion, he would extend it by joining with another, whole as himself. <laughs> uh, the holiness of your relationship forgives you both, undoing the effects of what you both believed and saw. That was the first sentence in paragraph two. Anyway, just one point out a couple of those ideas. All right, so... Um, Let's let's uh, do our, our two extended periods, morning and evening, in our hourly remembrance today. I feel the love of God within me now. I feel the love of God within me now. Thank you all so much for joining me on this journey to our 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 Creator. Be sure to take your your time to to really do what the lesson asks you to do. Um, to, as he said, simply do this, be still and lay aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is, all concepts you have learned about the world, all images you hold about yourself. Empty your mind of everything it thinks is either true or false or good or bad, of every thought it judges worthy and all the ideas of which it is ashamed. Hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought the past has taught nor one belief you ever learned before from anything. Forget this world, forget this course, and come with holy empty hands unto your God. And just stay there until you feel the love of God within you now, because from that feeling, you'll see the outside world will show you the world. That will be the world you'll see, because that's the world you want. All right, until tomorrow, I feel the love of God within me now. <laughs>